welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Tarot, and thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my old subscribers that have continued to support me, and if you are a new subscriber or coming back, uh, welcome. It's great to have you. For your reading today, I am going to be using the Thoth Tarot Large Deck, which is not read with reversals as per the uh, tradition of Aleister Crowley and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. This deck is not read with reversals, so I will not be reading reversals today. For your oracle message, I will be pulling one card from the Psychic Tarot for the Heart by John Holland. And as always, these are general readings and will not resonate with everyone. I always recommend getting a private reading for the most accurate reading with the most accurate outcome. Also, if you would like to book a private reading with me, you can do so. Uh, drop up in the description below this video. There will be a link there. Uh, that will take you to my scheduling page and you can book a reading. I am offering gift certificates as well for those of you who are interested in getting a gift certificate for a friend or family or for a present. Um, that is under uh, my private readings, the products and services. Also I have a new reading that I'm offering. It is the um, year, uh, your year ahead forecast for 2017. Uh, you'll see that under private readings. It is a 50-minute reading. I am offering it for, I believe, $45. So it's a great deal, and it's a very extensive reading. We'll cover each month in the year going forward and your overall outcome and challenge for the year. So um, I'd love to see more people sign up for that. But uh, you might have noticed also that I did not put out a love forecast for December, but I did put out a general reading. Those are available on my Patreon page. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have stuck by me while I just take a, uh, I guess you could say, a spiritual retreat or break uh, in December. I had gone away for Thanksgiving, and when I came back, I was extremely drained and needed to take some time off for myself. So. Thank you so much for bearing with me, and I am back to do your January readings. I also wanted to say that I do moderate my channel for negative comments. This is a safe place, and I hope to see um, all of your comments on here, but I will be removing anyone that leaves um, negative comments that are just not helpful and don't provide any really good critiques or support. So, um, Also, if you see my videos on YouTube being... Um, rebroadcasted by any other person other than the good, the bad, and the tarot, please report them to me so that I can have them uh, fill out a DMCA and have them taken down. Yes, that has happened in the past. So anyway, let's get going with your reading. Thank you so much for listening. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your January 2017 love forecast for the new year. I hope you guys have all been having a wonderful December so far and uh, Many blessings to all of you for a happy new year. These are your love forecasts for January 2017. Spirit will be so for Aquarius. Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in life. For all my Aquarius suns, moons, and risings out there, and those on their Christmas. All right, let's take a look at your cards. Eight of Swords crossed by Two of Swords. What comes below you is the Knight of Cups. What comes above you is the Moon. In your recent past, or passing passing, you have the Princess of Discs. In your near future, you have the Three of Swords 
In the position of how you see yourself, you have the Nine of Wands. In your environment, this is also how your significant other or the person you think about the most may be viewing you or dealing with you. They have the Prince of Wands. Your hopes and fears are the Ten of Cups. And your outcome for the month of January is the Ace of Wands. Very nice, Aquarius. You, um, it looks like you get through uh, the month on a positive note. Let me just adjust the color here. And uh, we can talk about your cards now. So you walk into the month of January with the energy of the Eight of Swords. So this is the energy that symbolizes your energy. And you are an air sign, so uh, this does make sense. We are dealing with interference here, which is the direct meaning of the Eight of Swords in the Taught Tarot. And this can indicate, um, you know, you really being your own worst enemy. Um, if there's something that you feel trapped or restricted about your situation, it's important to realize that, uh, you know, you're bringing that prison wherever you go. Um, you can set yourself free at any time just by simply changing the way that you look at things. This is a perception of there being uh, things getting in your way, but it can also literally be an energy that is happening to you, in which case it's even more important, important excuse me, that you uh, notice that you are not a victim and that that victim mentality is something that uh, is controlled through your mind and your thoughts. It's further reiterated by the card that covers you or what is helping or hindering you with the Two of Swords, which means peace in the, two, in the top tarot, but I also see it as a stalemate situation wanting to do two things that cannot be done together. It can also suggest that your challenge is to make a decision and to be decisive. And uh, you may feel like you don't have that choice. You may feel like you're the victim in the situation and uh, you're, you may attempt to go back to a place where you feel um, powerless. Uh, or choose to remain powerless as opposed to taking action. Now, I do feel like there's a change um, that you do go through uh, after a period of loss or sacrifice, but um, there is a progression because we do go from the Two of Swords to the Three of Swords. So I feel like uh, it is through a sacrifice, it is through uh, something that could potentially break your heart, that you... Um, start to see things differently. Uh, now, what puts you here is the Knight of Cups. Now, this can either be, uh, the, this is the foundation of the situation, this is something you may not be aware of. This is something that is contributing to this Eight of Swords, this interference. Now, this can represent another person in your life or your own energy. The Knight of Cups is the spiritual seeker. He is the lover. Um, may represent someone with water sign energy, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. I often think of this as a Cancerian because of the little cup here coming out of the chalice. But this is someone who is very much uh, offering their love to someone. They are very poetic, they are very dreamy, they are following their heart. And, um... I actually do feel like this could be your energy, Aquarius, if you have cancer in your chart or you are involved with a cancer. Also, I feel like um, this may be saying that you are a little bit unrealistic about your expectations in love or that you have uh, high expectations and dreams that... Uh, you feel are, can go unfulfilled for a long period of time um, with this Eight of Swords here. So remember that you have the power to choose. It is your life, and uh, you can make of it what you want. 
Now, if this is someone else, it's also saying that because this person is a little bit dreamy, is a little bit of a dreamer, a little bit of a poet, a little bit of a sed seductress or seductor, seductor, it's not even a word, seducer, that they, um, that uh, you feel like you cannot take action on that person or you feel like you are stuck where you are. Um, even though you may want the treasures involved in a situation, even though you may want to follow through with something, your dreams. In the recent past, this is the influence leaving you. We have the Princess of Discs. Again, this can be a literal person. She is the daughter of the, of the Queen of Discs. And this is the, uh, represents the earth energy of the print of the disc suit. Uh, so this is someone who's very grounded, very focused. Um, it can speak to new beginnings. This can also represent an earth sign woman or young lady of Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. And she is, uh, very connected to the earth. She's very connected to being in harmony with nature. This may also represent someone who is starting out in a new career or um, the focus is on the body as well here, on the physical. So um, whatever that means to you, I, I do see that both of these influences are contributing to your current situation. It may be that you are uh, dealing with two different people or someone that is showing two different sides of the personality. Either way, I feel like they are not quite fully mature, so I wouldn't say, you know, it's hard to say, but age-wise, someone in their 20s or 30s, um, but not much older. In your thoughts and feelings, this is what crowns you. You have the moon. And so the moon is a card of uh, the most dangerous path. It is the path that uh, is perhaps the most feared because we don't know where it goes. We don't know where it ends. And it can also speak to witchcraft or black magic, things that uh, we may also be afraid of. But the moon rules the subconscious and the things that um, speak to our shadow self, the shadow sides of ourselves. And there is uh, the underworld depicted here and things that rest in our subconscious. But in general, this is a, it can be a highly romantic card. Um, but I also sense that you may be a little bit afraid or confused about where things are going. And then you may be thinking that throughout January where there's a, um, I'm getting trepidation um, and an inability to kind of let go, let go and go with the flow a little bit, which brings me to your near future card, which is one to two weeks into the middle of January. You do have the three of swords, which can indicate some kind of sorrow and may uh, say that you are uh, going through a little bit of a heartbreak or separation from a loved one. But again, this can be temporary. Uh, I do feel like you will have to make some sacrifice in the middle of January. This may be painful and may create sorrow in your life. But um, the good thing about that is that where you were at a truce or where you were indecisive, you now have to make a decision. Something has to be released here. And it's good because you have the Knight of Wands in the position of how you see yourself. This is a very, uh, well, it can indicate frustration, but it can also indicate a very passionate side of yourself. It can indicate travel and positive news. And the Knight of Wands is the airy, the air energy of the suit of wands. He is someone in his, uh, I would say, maybe 30s, late 30s, not much older, a very passionate energy, very flamboyant energy, a very um, funny kind of energy as well. This can be a funny person. 
someone who isn't afraid to laugh. So I don't think that you, um, I don't think that you are going to stay there for long, but I do sense that there is some clashing going on. And in your environment, you have the Prince of Wands, which is also how your significant other would be viewing you or dealing with you. And here we have uh, a maybe a less mature uh, energy here than how you see yourself, but still this is someone who is uh, expecting news, someone who is receiving news. This is a very upbeat energy. I can also indicate travel plans or movement. And someone who is seeking out adventure and fun. So there's a lot of this fire energy. Again, you could be dealing with a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius as well this month. And um, this fire energy may be as a result of a loss. But it can also say that with the loss, you are gaining a new power, a new energy. There is a, an arrival of something new coming into your life. I feel like there is uh, hope and uh, adventure coming into your life. In your hopes and fears, you do have the Ten of Cups, which represents the most happiness, but it is um, kind of a superficial type of happiness. It's almost unstable because of the number of cups in this card. It does represent satiety, and in your hopes, I believe that you do want this picture-perfect happiness. You do want this uh, almost too much uh, water energy here. The interesting thing is, is that you don't have any water energy at all in this reading, except I would say with this Knight of Cups in your foundation and the moon, which does represent the well. It's a reflective energy as well. And here you are, there's a lot of mental or communications are very important at the beginning of January. And um, so I think that the issue does revolve around this uh, feeling of being stuck and not making a decision. I think that there is a decision possibly made on your behalf. But the good thing about that is um, it sets you on fire. It, uh, the, from the sorrow comes this new life force. Um, I feel like some of you are going to be a little bit upset or angry about this, but um, you do have a beautiful card in your outcome. You have the Ace of Wands which is uh, only the seed of the ace. It's the beginning of something new and exciting. It can indicate sudden passionate feeling or creative inspiration. So do you feel like you will be inspired by someone? It could be that you are inspired by even a loss. So um, the ace of wands is a very phallic symbol as well and can symbolize that uh, sudden rush of uh, passion. But I think that you will be very creatively inspired at the beginning, uh, sorry, at the middle of January, going into the end of January. Um, but you do need to get back into your heart a little bit more. You need to get in touch with your emotions. I think that's what the Nine of Cups is here for. Um, someone wants more of that in their life. And I think that in releasing something at the middle of the month, you are able to reclaim some of that passionate energy. I'm going to go ahead and pull an oracle message for you. What does Aquarius need to know? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in life. For all my Aquarius suns, moons, and risings, and this one cuts. Okay. Well, 
Well, I was not expecting to get this card, but I'm happy it's here. You do have the Zero or the Fool and the Major Arcana. Trust. Some kind of new beginning here for you, Aquarius, as a guidance message. Have faith and believe in the unknown. Set yourself free. The universe will support you. Keywords are leap, dare, innocence, optimism, belief, and courage. Rejoice. The universe is looking out for you. Now it's time to trust that the path you're on is in fact the right one. Believe that whatever you desire concerning affairs of the heart can be manifested in the proper time and for your highest good. Trusting the universe takes courage, but it also removes the burden of doing it all on your own. When you feel alone in a situation, it can diminish your energy and desire to take actions that will improve the situation. This card reminds you that you are not alone. It is also a reminder that positive energy is available to you to manifest what you truly desire. In addition to trust, this is a card of action and opportunity. Once we know that the universe has our back, we are free to take that all-important leap of faith and pursue our dreams concerning affairs of the heart. Put aside any fear, disillusionment, frustration, or hopelessness, and open your heart to what you desire. Do it now with the carefree innocence you had as a child and expect to receive what you need. Take steps to find love or to improve or strengthen a relationship. Take some risks and maintain an attitude of positive expectancy. Whether it's a relationship with another person or the relationship with yourself, now is the time to take action. Even a good relationship can be improved. What steps can you take to achieve what you desire? Your affirmation is, I open myself to giving and receiving love that is for my highest good. I open myself to giving and receiving love that is for my highest good. And the traditional tarot archetype is the fool. The guidance has to do with... Um, I do see that in order for you to get to your next place that you need to be, and that will happen if you follow the guidance of the tarot, I believe, is when you follow your heart and you, you release something that maybe has not been so good for you, it can even be a way of thinking, a way of being in the world, that you allow this positive energy to enter your life this adventure and enthusiasm. Because that is what you need, Aquarius. Love that is for your highest good, but it is going to take trust and faith that all will be fine, all will be okay. Um, you are a little bit afraid of the what lies in the future here. You are a little bit um, unsure about taking this leap of faith. But it's when you take this leap of faith that you reap the most rewards and that you claim um, love that is hot for your highest good. And you step out of this place where you feel blocked, trapped, and perhaps a little bit of a victim. So it is a very positive message and uh, I do see a lovely outcome for you at the end of January with the Ace of Wands that is truly an inspiration for you. Um, I believe that this is exactly what you need in your life and it will be coming at just the right time. So have trust and have faith and keep doing what you're doing. All will be, all will work out for your highest good. I don't know what's going on with all the sirens out there, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you all for your support this year. I've enjoyed reading for you every single day uh, and every single month. And uh, I wish you all a happy new year, much love and light, 
and I'll see you soon for the next reading. Take care.